Hey everybody, doing a quick video here um, about using the mouse um, in SFML. So let me just show you this uh, program I have here. Um, you'll notice that I got um, in the console I'm printing out when I click a button and when I release a button. Um, so right now I'm clicking the mouse, the left mouse button, and when I just click it, it jumps uh, to the center of my cursor, and then when I hold it down, it will actually um, follow the cursor until I let it go. So, um, you know, you can sort of think of this as a little, you know, drag and drop or, you know, the start of something where you would drag and drop. Um, so th there's a couple of tricks to get in this work, but overall it's, um, it's pretty straightforward. So, um, let's, uh, let's talk about how the mouse works. So there's kind of two, uh, there's actually three sort of ways the mouse works in SFML. Um, there's one, um, which some of you might have noticed, is that we have um, here is something called an event. So there's definitely events associated with um, mouse. And those are, those are things that are, um, you know, the, the, your program sort of just waiting for something to happen. Like, you know, the, the, the event that all of our programs have in SFML pretty much are like, did you click on the X, right? And if we get that kind of event, then we, you know, shut down the window. So um, in this case, I'm, I'm using the uh, event type um, to actually tell when the mouse button is released because the other way that we can pay attention to thing is with the, the mouse listener. Um, so the mouse listener is really good for kind of checking like, what is the mouse doing right now? Okay, like, is the button pressed right now? I'm gonna keep checking and keep checking. Am I getting a signal from the mouse? Um, that's what the mouse um, listener is really good at. Um, the event is really great for when the mouse changes from doing one thing to the other, right? So you can de de detect a click, but it's good for detecting like the first click and the release. Whereas this is going to say, oh, am I, am I down? Am I down? I, I can um, you know, do a lot with that. So, um, and then the other thing we have is there's actually we can treat it like just any other object. And so when we make a, make a my mouse object, what that lets us do is we can actually go in and get the, um, the coordinates of the, um, of the mouse. So those are three ways we're going to use to, to make this program. So, um, so just quickly made my, um, circle. Um, so I wanted to solve this problem of, um, you know, if I don't, um, do a um, if I don't check to see that the mouse has been pressed, um, what ends up happening is that it, it sort of spam clicks, right? Because we said this is always checking what's the state. Well, is the button pressed? Is the button pressed? Is the button pressed? It, it gets kind of annoying. And like if we looked at the program from before, it would have you know spammed out like a million. I just got pressed. Sometimes that's what we want. Like maybe we make a game and we want to you know, always, um, you know, adjust based on uh, the mouse being clicked or we want to, you know, do a paint program or we're drawing while the mouse button's, you know, you know, down or something. So knowing is it down, yeah, that could be useful. But most of the time that that's sort of too much information and, and we're actually um, carrying out too many actions. So what do we want to do? We want to put a little Boolean in here. So I made a Boolean up here that just says, is, is my button down, right? Left button down. In this case, it's false. I'm assuming I'm not starting my program holding a button. So that's good. Um, and so what happens when we come in here, we ask the, mutt, the mouse, is the button pressed? And then we can ask it um, which button. So we have the ability to ask for the, the left or the right um, uh, button here. Um, and so we say, we hit the left button. And is my left button down? Um, and the answer is false, right? So the first time we hit the button, then we set this Boolean to true and we can print out a message that says, I press the button. So now when I come back through my loop, this isn't going to trigger again. Why? Because this is set to true. So all of a sudden we have it. So the button is only registering being down one time. However, I wanted to have some feature when the button was held down. So what do we do? Well, if the button's down, then we're going to set the position of the bob, which is my uh, circle. I'm going to set it to, what am I going to do? I'm going to ask the mouse for its position. So I used the my mouse class that I made up here. 
And so I say, well, dot get position. And then I got to pass it the window because I actually want to know where it is inside the window rather than the whole screen. Um, so that's really important. If you get it from the whole screen and then all your other coordinates are based on the window, it might be hard to follow um, the math that you do. So in this case, um, I get the position. It actually returns it as a, as a vector, um, you know, a vector 2f or 2i. Um, I wanted to get the actual x and y coordinates individually, but I could also just do, in this case, my mouse get position and, and skip this part and use it as a vector. I thought I might be, you know, modifying it in some way uh, to make it centered, but I ended up not having to do it. So you could also just do, uh, uh, you know, get position window and it'll return the x and y coordinate and work out uh, probably just fine. But x and y, it likes that. Um, and then you can modify it as the case. So now we have the, we've handled all of our issues with clicking. And now we know that it, we got clicked and it'll stay happening until we get down. But I want to be able to um, keep track of um, when did I actually release that button. Um, so we got to go into events then because that's the change of state, right? So if we're changing something, then events are probably our buddy. So we come in here and we ask for the event. So events get um, all sorts of things can be events like pressing keys and doing a bunch of stuff. So we have to ask it, what kind of event are you when we get an event? So we do event.type and then we say event and then there's just a bunch of these things. So here's like closed or, you know, key, you know, key press or, you know, there's, there's, there's a bunch of things. In this case, I have mouse button released. So if it's a mouse button released, then we have to ask, well, what kind of mouse button got released? Okay, this is, this is important because if I don't double check this, then I could be clicking the right button. And when I let go of the right button, it could flip my um, Boolean for me. I don't want that, right? Because I probably am going to want to have something happen with the right button and the left button um, in my program. So right here, um, fix this indenting. Um, so now what happens? I check to see if it's the left. If the left button is down, I set it, um, set it back to its initial state and I print out a little message saying I released the button. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's, it, it's real straightforward. Um, you don't really have to do anything fancy here. What you end up spending more time doing with the, the mouse is, um, you know, coming up with a, a little bit of code to say, is it down? Is it not down? Um, and so using this combination of the listener to check for when it's down and the event to check when it's released, you kind of get um, best for both worlds. And, and I like that. So hope this was useful. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. Hey, everybody. We're going to do a little work with sprite sheets today in SFML. Sprite sheets are a great way to do animations. Um, you can see here that um, we actually have all the animation frames that we want um, for our character all laid out in one file. So this red-headed lass um, has kind of a down-facing position, left, right, and facing up, kind of the standard um, ways we might move around in a, um, you know, kind of Zelda-style game or, you know, role-playing game or something like that. Um, this is a pretty simple animation. Um, it's four frames. Um, you could see as we go across a row, you can see, okay, we're basically standing still. We're moving our left arm forward. We're standing still. We're moving our right um, arm forward. And hopefully the idea is, is as this character transitions through those, if we cycle them correctly, you'll actually see a, see a nice animated um, feature. So our, our goal here is that we've made one PNG file um, that has all the information we need to do um, our, our character. And then we're going to basically grab little chunks of this file and apply them as needed. So kind of to start off, um, you want to make sure that you have, um, you kind of know where your sprite sheet is. So I have my sprite sheet um, C++ file here and I was lazy so I just put it in the same folder. Um, Honestly, if we're doing a, you know, any sort of substantial project, we'll have some folders like resources for our sounds and images, and we put it in there. But for this case, um, we're just going to uh, put it right there. So I'll kind of go over the, um, 
the, the initial setup of the sprite sheet, and then I'll go into some things I did to, to make it look a little nicer. So um, right off, first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to set a, create a texture object. Um, a texture object, what it is, is actually to hold the image file um, that we, we load into it. And then the sprite is basically a, um, you know, you can think of it as like a little white box. It's, it's, it's going to get the texture applied to it. It's sort of the thing we move around. So the texture is our image, and then the sprite is the actual sort of object that we will control and see if it collides with things and, and whatnot. So right here we have a quick little load of, um, of the actual file. So we ask the sprite sheet to load from file. And then we type in our um, the path to our file. Um, we use PNGs um, a lot with sprite sheets, um, mainly because they keep transparency layers. Um, and a lot of times we want our um, sprite to be on a, a transparent where it's not the actual um, character that we want. So I have a little message here. If you notice that this says, if not sprite sheet load from file. So basically it says, if this doesn't, if this doesn't return true, then I'm going to print out, I failed at spriting. So that's nice to get a little message basically telling you that you typed in the wrong name here, you put it in the wrong spot. And the second thing we want to do right away is we want to actually just like attach the sprite sheet to our, um, to our, in this case, player sprite. Okay. So what this is doing is just saying, hey, hey sprite, you're going to get um, things from our sprite sheet. Um, and we'll notice that we're setting the texture. So at this point, it's actually got the whole sprite sheet is kind of what is um, being looked at, but we are gonna fix that in a minute. We don't want it to show 16 pictures at once, we want it to show one at once. Um, so now we go into our, you know, our main loop and we come down here and this um, is actually where the, the command that actually sets up um, how to pull the, pull the actual specific part of the sprite sheet that we want. So we have this command called set texture rect, which is for set texture rectangle. And then we have um, the interact, which um, you may or may not have used, but basically it's an integer rectangle. And we basically have to give it the things that we, we care about. So the first um, pair of this is the top left corner of the sprite that you are interested in. Okay, so um, this is basically sort of like, let's find, um, you know, which, uh, which corner we're interested in. And then down here, we can, um, these guys right here, we are basically saying what, what size are the, the tiles in our, um, our sprite. So in this case, we're saying that these are 32 pixels across and 48 pixels down. I'm kind of zoomed in. If I shrink it down to normal size, you can see these are kind of, you know, small sprites. 32 top, 48 down. So what's this going to have happen is that in our initial case, I actually made a variable called um, row and frame here because I'm going to start off at zero comma zero, and it's going to be the top left corner, and these guys, I'm going to cycle through them. So how am I cycling through them? This is actually kind of um, the important thing is you could set them up so that when you click the mouse or move the keyboard or whatever, I just wanted it to show a walking animation and I wanted it to change, in this case, once a second. So I did a couple of things. I set my frame rate limit to be 60, so it could only do 60 frames a second. And then I made a little counter that said, hey, if I get up to 60, then you know, time to change the frame. And this little line of code is very useful for dealing with um, these switches, is that you want to know which frame you're on. And then this is actually your modding by how many frames are in your animation. So in this case, this is kind of spot frame 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm in a mod 4 situation. And then once I've done that, hey, my frame went up by 1. OK, I reset it back to 0. I count another 60 and then I'll keep doing that. And then once I've gone four frames, what's going to happen? I'm going to reset. Okay. So let's run it and see how that looks. And let me drag it over to this window. 
for whatever reason, it's being weird about me actually dragging it. Keeps wanting to uh, maximize it. Wow, that's a fat one. Okay, let's uh, let's shrink this down here. So, anyways, you can see right now we have a very slowly walking um, thing. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, as you can see here, about once a second, it transitioning arm forward, arm back, which is just what we want. So now we can mess around with, um, because of how we set this up, um, actually this should be uh, 48 times row, uh, because we wanted to jump down the thing. So for instance, if I wanted to cycle through one of the animations, I could say, hey, let's, um, whoops, I want, frame to be zero still, but I want to go to the next row and I want to take a look at um, what the uh, animation looks like on that row. So if I hit play, you will see that I ended up with, um, got to do this little trick again over here. Um, you'll see that I ended up with the side animation now, okay? So all I did there was um, switch which uh, switch which row I was at here, and then my little inked rectangle guy would pick the right spot. So again, what are we doing in, in general? We are making a texture in a sprite, we're loading the file, we're setting the sprite sheet to the whole thing, then we're coming down here and picking which spot out of that that we want. We're going for the upper left hand corner of the, uh, the cell we want basically, tell how big it is, and we can always snipe out the thing. In the end, we can make a sprite sheet that has more than one character of information on it, right? And uh, then we can use one texture in memory and apply it to all sorts of sprites in our game. Hope that was useful, folks. Have a nice day.